good morning. We uh, called this press conference to talk about what we filed on Friday. Just to recap where we are on the opioid uh, issue here in um, administration is on February 14th, we issued our a declaration of a disaster emergency. And as, as part of that, we began a process that uh, today is, is, uh, uh, is, is one step in that process. It's the first time that uh, there's ever been a, that we could find a declaration of disaster on a, uh, a health issue, uh, an epidemic nature of what we see with the opioid heroin, heroin uh, uh, abuse in Alaska. Uh, two days later, I issued Administrative Order 283, uh, which did four things. It uh, uh, directed everyone to apply for all, as much federal funding as possible, federal grants, uh, which has been ongoing. Uh, we are addressing the uh, Ill illegal importation of, uh, of drugs into our state and into uh, rural Alaska from, from the urban areas of Alaska. Uh, we stood up an ICS an incident command system uh, on this disaster which again is typically used in, in, uh, in forest fires and earthquakes, uh, et cetera, and we're using this, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent system. Uh, Dr. Jay Butler is, is, uh, uh, is, is heading that up. Uh, and additionally, a part of that is uh, on the inmate program, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Williams is addressing the inmate issues as far as uh, things that can be done on, on discharge, things that can be done uh, in the prisons and whatnot associated with, uh, with drug, drug use. Uh, the next step, last Friday, we filed uh, a piece of legislation that I talked about during the State of the State. Uh, it's a piece of legislation that addresses a number of things, uh, and I'll briefly uh, mention what those, what those are. One is it, it creates a, a patient voluntary non-opioid directive. Basically, when they go in uh, to, for medical treatments and hospitalization, et cetera, they can sign a waiver saying, I do not want to receive opioids as part of my, my medication. Um, the second thing is that uh, we're part of the bill requires a continuing a paid pain management CLE for uh, licensing and, and renewals of licensing for medical practitioners, uh, one that um, we think is, is, um, is, is appropriate given the impact of, of, uh, of opioids being, being um, prescribed for, for pain management. Uh, the third is it limits the prescription, uh, the initial prescription for a seven-day supply. Um, I spoke about this a bit during the State of the State. Uh, Massachusetts um, does this. A number of states are now doing this as far as having a, a maximum limit for, uh, uh, and of course there's certain exceptions for certain situations, but the, uh, the standard is to have a limit of uh, uh, seven days. The fourth, it adds the veterinarians to the uh, uh, registered to a controlled substance uh, database. Um, fifth is that the pharmacist uh, also register on the controlled uh, substance database. Uh, sixth is the, um, uh, the controlled uh, substance prescription database is updated daily uh, under this legislation rather than weekly. Uh, weekly was uh, stretched out uh, too far. A person can sort of uh, get out of control and, and over a period of weeks, so now it's going to be updated on, on a daily basis. And the last is that uh, the Board of Pharmacy will issue a, a confidential report card to the, uh, uh, those that administer opioids so they can sort of see kind of where they, where they fall in, in, the, in the scale of, of uh, uh, distribution and, and, and whatnot to see if there's, there's uh, something that could be, could be handled there. Um, you know, over the past several weeks, uh, our Chief uh, Medical Officer, Dr. Jay Butler, has met with um, a number of uh, medical uh, practitioners, uh, facilities around the state uh, to provide, uh, to discuss with them what we're doing, what the legislation will do, and, and to also receive their input. Um, it's, a, it's a big state. You can't go, uh, you can't go to every, every physician, but we have, uh, uh, Dr. Butler's been quite busy reaching out as much as, uh, as can be done in that limited period of time. Um, we are. We filed it um, on Friday, uh, and the reason is that uh, we want we want to continue this momentum that um, um, that is underway. That is very appropriate. Uh, when I was at the National Governors Association in um, uh, in Washington, uh, there were a number of discussions about this, uh, comparing with what other states are doing on this issue. Um, I had a chance to visit with. Uh, uh, Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, who was uh, on, so, somewhat on the lead on this, and we, we followed closely what was going on in Massachusetts. Um, so we think that uh, what we are, uh, have put in this legislation is uh, needed, it's appropriate, and it's a, uh, 
it's not uh, it's not the be all and end all. Uh, mm-hmm. There's many paths to, to recovery. Uh, there's many other things that uh, we are working on, but this is one that um, is is we believe quite significant, and we're we're uh, um, uh, we're pleased that it it is now uh, been filed on Friday. It'll be read right across today, and we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So. Um, so with that, I can I can ask uh, I can take questions. I have a number of folks here that can can uh, help answer questions. Uh, should you have any? Um, so um, and we also have um, uh, Andy Jones uh, has a drug deactivation disposal kit, uh, which he can do a demonstration if if you would like of how that how that works. And uh, it's not part of the legislation, but is certainly part of what we're trying to do to uh, bring awareness to this issue and. Uh, uh, do all we can to um, uh, reduce uh, and eliminate, if possible, uh, this epidemic in Alaska. So, with that, I'll take questions. Austin, um, Governor Austin Berry from PTU. Uh, were there specific uh, abuses or specific instances that led to the push to add veterinarians and pharmacists to the controlled substances database? And uh, also, why uh, make it so the board of pharmacy is issuing? Well, a couple of things. The uh, there were, I'm not aware of any specific reasons that, as far as anybody that's issuing, you know, uh, opioids is, is, is sort of brought into the brought into this process. So there wasn't anything specific about the veterinarians that, that we were concerned about. Um, you know, a number of other states have done the uh, the confidential report cards. There's a lot of HIPAA issues associated with with uh, uh, distribution of medical information. So I'd be very very careful about that. So it's a uh, sort of a voluntary self policing. Uh, uh, process, if you will, uh, we have watched how it's, Arizona. I know has adopted this, and a number of other states. So uh, th- we're not we're not uh, bashful about looking out to see what other states are doing. Is it working? There's a benefit. It looks like there's benefit to it. A number of the practitioners uh, brought suggested this as well that this would this would be helpful. They found so. Again, it's that delicate balance between uh, the HIPAA uh, confidential requirements and and uh, and also gathering gathering data. So, Liz. We have, and I'm going to ask uh, Val Davidson to uh, to speak to that a bit, since she knows firsthand. Guyana Governor, uh, for the record, my name is Nukhagalak Amitlamaganan, Valerie Davidson, Commissioner of the Department of Health and Social Services. Um, the department um, partnered with, actually, the Department of Corrections uh, to apply for a $2 million grant. That's a federal grant that would be made available uh, to do an address uh, treatment and prevention on a number of issues, including uh, medication-assisted treatment. And I should say um, that uh, Dr. Butler, our chief medical officer, would actually be here today. Um, And so he sends his regards. He's actually president of the Association for State and Territorial Health Officials, has a a national role, and he's actually um, in D.C. advocating for more resources for Alaska and uh, addressing uh, the opioid epidemic on a national level as well. So we're fortunate to have him, and uh, today his work calls him uh, to D.C. Thank you. Thank you. Nat? Um, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, I, I guess I, I have a two-part question. One is very simple. Do you expect the legislature uh, to pass this legislation this year? And two, at, at sort of a big-picture level, Um, Are you satisfied with the legislature's pace of work on sort of all of your legislation that's not connected directly to the budget crisis deficit reduction? Well, first on the on this issue on this particular legislation, yes, we certainly are very hopeful that it passes this year because the sooner it passes, the sooner it becomes implemented, and and the sooner we start, you know, sort of, I mean, not sort of, start saving lives, we believe. And so this is a this is a very important piece of legislation. I am pleased with the pace of of activity in this building. I think that uh, that both bodies are are uh, are moving legislation, uh, and they are uh, they are they're on a track on a pace that we think the 90 day session will be. uh, uh, will be met. So I'm I'm very pleased with what we're seeing. Amen. Becky, you must have a question. Yeah. I was going to ask oh, Becky Boyd from Associated Press. I was going to ask if there is any uh, fiscal note attached to this bill. And you mentioned the decision from a be all and end all. Are you anticipating further legislation this year? Or 
Well, on the fiscal note, I mean, we have um, who's the best one on the fiscal note? I wonder, uh, Chris, perhaps, Darwin. Um, uh, but be, well, they just sort of who's going to do that? Um, no, there's other things that can be done that are, may not require legislation. Uh, that may require um, some uh, um, funding, which we'll find somehow, somewhere uh, within the budget. There's some things we're doing on, on uh, uh, some drug dog things where they're being ordered. Some, some, you know, it's a, it's a uh, when we get together on our uh, uh, incident command system meetings, they they go around the table pretty rapidly about all the things that different departments are doing. It's amazing how widespread this is throughout the various departments and whatnot. So, um, so there'll be other things, not necessarily, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think we're going to have additional legislation this year on this uh, particular issue, none that I'm, uh, we're planning at this point. This is, this is, a, um, this is sufficient for now, I think. Chris, you want to talk about the fiscal? No. Um, Chris Lana, Commissioner of Commerce, Community and Economic Development. It's only a small fiscal note just for providing reports. Andrew. Andrew Fishman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Uh, did, did you receive much pushback from uh, doctors, the medical community, medical community about uh, the update, uh, requiring the updates to be made every day uh, as far as whether that would be a burden on them? You know, I, you know, Dr. Butler would probably be the best to answer that question. I think there was certainly some discussion about that. Anything that impacts somebody else's, uh, Chris, you have uh, in, impact someone's practice and, and uh, you know takes them more to, uh, to the updating more more often than not I think um, I think there was some some natural concern about that but uh, Chris you want to speak to that sure um, right now the the database is a report is issued once a week and we're going to go to one a, once a day and our database contractor has told us there won't be any additional cost for that Liz Well, we wouldn't. That wouldn't require legislation to to do that. Um, it's a matter of, of of the funding associated to to uh, to have that have that greater presence. So um, we are looking at that again. It's not part of this bill because it wouldn't be appropriate. But uh, with uh, Commissioner uh, Monaghan, uh, I don't know if you want to speak to that. <coughs> Thank you. In regards to the stepped up enforcement, we are going to continue to do what we've always done, but with a little bit more energy this time in regards to uh, looking at state, local, and tribal partners in, because uh, no one wants this, this kind of uh, event happening in their community. So I think there's a lot more enthusiasm for intense um, law enforcement and activities like that. And incidentally, in regards to the fiscal note on uh, the dogs that we just purchased, that are the drug dogs, we use forfeiture funds. So that came from a, a prior drug case. Thank you, sir. Matt. Um, Matt Harris with Alaska Dispatch News. How would you connect this effort by your administration uh, with what's happening in Washington with um, sort of efforts to change the Affordable Care Act and sort of what's mm -hmm. your current message to the Congress uh, about what they're well, the message to Congress when we were there was that the uh, the two are, are very much related. We now have on, on the uh, uh, Medicaid expansion, I believe the numbers of 30,000 people in Alaska now are, are benefiting from that. And the treatment uh, on this is very much uh, related to Medicaid expansion. So we see the two are intertwined, and that was the message in, in Washington. To we met with both um, um, you know, House and, and Senate. Uh, 